when I was 14 years old. I remember standing in my bedroom and looking out the window and just knowing that something big was going on in this world. And since no one was telling me what it was, I had to get out and find it for myself. And now, I know the truth. You see it every day, you and I. It's on the face of almost every car produced in the U.S. and the rest of the world since the 1990s. What is it? It's the shape of the eyes of the demons who are soon to appear on Earth masquerading as our alien saviors. The line they promised to lead the inhabitants of our planet towards peace and harmony. But these demonic beings have been summoned by the Satanists, who are now controlling every government on this Earth from behind a dark curtain. All of this to usher in the Aquarian Age of the New World Order, a partnership with the devil, designed by Satan himself to lead mankind directly into hell. One of the biggest problems for the satanic architects of this scheme was the process of getting the people of the world ready for the utterly shocking appearance of these demonic beings. Overt subliminal programming became the answer. Starting in the 1950s, the secret government began ushering in the jet and space ages through the design of toys, household products, automobiles, also TV shows and films about UFOs and spacemen. The same program of desensitizing through repetition continues today. If you look closely at your TV, computer, smartphone, your car, or any other gadgets made within the last 30 years or so, chances are you'll see some type of futuristic space-inspired design or alien-inspired shapes. The Satanists who hold the power in this world are working feverishly day and night to prepare the way for the one who they call the Maitreya who is also the Antichrist. He'll make his appearance on this earth very soon, and just as God tells us in the Bible, the Antichrist will come bearing great signs and wonders. More than likely, he'll be accompanied by aliens slash demons, and he'll introduce the world to the beast, who is the devil himself. We're at war, people. And whether you want to believe it or not, the New World Order, along with their evil master, the devil, and his demon thugs, are at your doorstep, poised and ready to turn the key in the handle and open your world up to the most horrific era the world has ever seen. Satan plans, through these tyrants, to enslave and drag all of humanity into hell with them. That includes you. The time to accept Jesus is now. Jesus is the only answer. be able to track me. You have a cell phone? They can track you right now. Okay, um, um, okay, well, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are, they're, uh, they're, they're extra-dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the, um, space program made contact with. Uh, they, they are not what they claim to be. Uh, they have infiltrated a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of aspects of, of, of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming, they, the, the military, I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them. And there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now, Art. But they're not doing, they're not doing anything. They are not. They want the major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. Scholars with no religious affiliation who have looked into this topic of UFOs and ETs for several decades have come to very interesting conclusions. Jack Vallée, a venture capitalist, computer scientist, author, ufologist, and former astronomer who helped build the precursor to what we know as the internet, 
has studied the UFO phenomenon for over three decades. After looking into the relationship between UFOs, cults, religious movements, demons, angels, ghosts, and psychic phenomenon, Vallee changed his proposed hypothesis from the UFO phenomenon being an extraterrestrial origin, in other words, craft and beings from another planet or faraway galaxy, to a multi-dimensional visitation hypothesis, or interdimensional. In his book, Messengers of Deception, Vallee states, quote, Human beings are under the control of a strange force that bends them in absurd ways, forcing them to play a role in a bizarre game of deception, end quote. Later in the same book, he states, quote, the UFO phenomenon represents a manifestation of a reality that transcends our current understanding of physics. The UFOs are physical manifestations that cannot be understood apart from their psychic and symbolic reality. What we see in effect here is not an alien invasion, it is a control system which acts on humans and uses humans." End quote. J. Allen Hynek, a U.S. astronomer, professor and ufologist best remembered for his contributions in the field of UFOs and acting as scientific advisor to UFO studies taken by the U.S. Air Force, again came to same conclusions of the UFOs and alleged extraterrestrial phenomenon. In his book, Edge of Reality, he states, quote, If UFOs are somebody else's nuts and bolts hardware, then we must still explain how such tangible hardware can change shape before our eyes, vanish in a Cheshire cat manner, not even leaving a grin, seemingly melt away in front of us, or apparently materialize mysteriously before us without apparent detection by persons nearby or in neighboring towns. We must wonder too where UFOs are hiding when not manifesting themselves to human eyes." End quote. The overall consensus seems to be that these crafts which are being seen have the ability to manifest as physical objects and at the same time manipulate time and space as to become invisible or perform aerial maneuvers that defy our current understanding of physics and nature. The deeper side to this phenomenon are the abduction accounts recorded by millions of people all over the world, regardless of time, race, culture, and upbringing. Dr. John Mack, professor at Harvard Medical School, a psychiatrist and writer, also looked into the UFO and abduction phenomenon for several decades and came to similar conclusions as Vallee and Hynek. Although he recently passed away, his contributions to the study of ufology and alien abductions is highly touted and greatly respected. He states in an interview with Nova Online when asked if the phenomenon is literally physical or psychological, stating, quote, Yes, it's both. It's both literally physically happening to a degree, and it's also some kind of psychological, spiritual experience occurring and originating perhaps in another dimension. And so the phenomenon stretches us, or it asks us to stretch to open to realities that are not simply the literal physical world, but to extend to a possibility that there is other unseen realities from which our consciousness, our, if you will, learning processes over the past several hundred years have closed us off." End quote. Dr. David Jacob, an associate professor of history at Temple University, specializing in 20th century American history and culture, has also studied the UFO and abduction phenomenon for over 40 years. In an interview with L.A. Marzulli in the book Alien Interviews, Jacobs comments on the alien abduction phenomenon, stating, quote, This is a phenomenon that is either psychological or it is happening. There is very little in the middle. I have learned that the abduction phenomenon is vast, global, and it occurs with great frequency, end quote. Whitley Strieber, in his classic account of an alien encounter in the book Communion, records his experience with these entities, stating, quote, I became entirely given over to extreme dread. The fear was so powerful that it seemed to make my personality become evaporate. Whitley ceased to exist. What was left was a body in a state of raw fear so great that it swept about me like a thick, suffocating curtain, turning paralysis into a condition that seemed close to death. I died and a wild animal appeared in my place." End quote. Then in a later release in a book entitled Transformation, The Breakthrough, he dives deeper into the experience, stating, quote, Increasingly, I felt as if I were entering a struggle that might even be more than life and death. It might be a struggle for my soul, my essence, or whatever part of me might have reference to the eternal. There are worse things than death, I suspected. So far, the word demon has never been spoken among the scientists and doctors who are working with me. Alone at night, I worried about the legendary cunning of demons. At the very least, I was going stark, raving mad." End quote. Then later in the same book, he states, quote, I felt an absolutely indescribable sense of menace. It was hell on earth to be there in the presence of these entities. And yet I couldn't move, couldn't cry out, 
couldn't get away. I lay as still as death, suffering inner agonies. Whatever was there seemed so monstrously ugly, so filthy and dark and sinister. Of course they were demons, they had to be, and they were here and I couldn't get away." End quote. According to many researchers in the field, and even the people who have directly experienced this phenomenon for themselves, all seem to agree that there is a spiritual element driving this phenomenon. It is clear that there is a metaphysical nature to the UFOs and the alien abductions themselves. Furthermore, the startling similarities with the phenomenon, with the occult and other historical mythological accounts of direct contact with demonic entities should be alarming. Jack Belay alludes to this concept, stating, quote, The symbolic display seen by the abductees is identical to the type of initiation ritual or astral voyage that is embedded in the occult traditions of every culture. The structure of abduction stories is identical to that of occult initiation rituals. The UFO beings of today belong to the same class of manifestation as the occult entities that were described in centuries past." End quote. There is another angle to this phenomenon that is seldom discussed but is very important to point out. That is the solution to help stop those who experience the alien abduction phenomenon. Joe Jordan, state-sanctioned director and field investigator for MUFON through his investigation at CE4 Research Group, has discovered that calling upon the name of Jesus Christ during the abduction can make the experience stop instantly. On their website, CE4Research.com, the mission statement states, quote, The mission of CE4 Research Group is to share with the world the most powerful evidence known that exposes the alien entities for who they really are. The evidence is in the testimony of those who have overcome the experience, the oppression, the bondage, the harassment, the control, the lies, the deception that these entities perpetuate by calling out in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Through this evidence of these testimonies, we will be able to help others. The world asks for this evidence and we will give it to them." End quote. Well, the first case I came across, I actually had interviewed this gentleman who claimed to have had an abduction experience along with other sighting experiences and um, other what he felt were abduction experiences too but he we decided to interview him and this was six months before i became a christian um, this was in the middle of 1996 that we did the interview with him and i used to come to my monthly meetings my mufon meetings that i had and he just wanted to share what he had been through you know and he was had a, an interest because of his experiences in the ufo phenomena and what he shared was an experience atypical abduction type experience um, where he had been taken experience being taken and immediately panicked and in fear and he himself actually just being a brand new Christian called out during this panic experience in saying Jesus Jesus help me and when he did that in an instant the experience abruptly stopped and he felt like he was thrown back into his bed he even startled his wife she asked him why he was jumping on the bed and uh, he said you know when he shared that experience he didn't understand what it meant and when we heard that we knew we had something because never before in all the studies we had done of the other work that the top researchers had done in the country you know this was 15 years ago um, the big names never before had anybody said that an experience could be stopped as a matter of fact they would they all said that it wasn't possible to stop an experience mm -hmm. okay but yet we had a gentleman that said he did and in a particular way so I contacted the, these top researchers around the country got their home phones called them up they're nice guys they can talk you can talk to them just like me and you were talking most of them are very nice gentlemen and I've met him at the conferences over the years. And uh, I said, guys, I've got a very unusual case here. I'd like to run it by you and see what you think. And uh, after I shared the story, they all asked, can we go off the record? And I said, well, that's fine. And I said, I'm just trying to get answers here. Well, when I say go off the record, that means I can't tell you who said what, but I can tell you what they said. Well, these guys, uh, they said that Yes, we had come across similar cases where people had cried out in the name of Jesus or had quoted scripture or had sung a Christian hymn and the experience stopped. And I said, really? And I said, first off, I've never read anywhere where you guys have said that an experience can even be stopped. And then second, 
I've never read where you've stated where they could be stopped in any type of manner like this. And I said, why is that? And one of two answers or both answers would come out from each of these researchers. The first one was pretty common amongst them was we didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> and, but you know what? I would have been fine with that because to me, that was an honest answer. I mean, I didn't know what to make of it either in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I, I could relate to them on that answer, but they always would follow it with a second answer. And it was, we were afraid to go there, meaning the spiritual side of this, mm -hmm. because it might affect our credibility in the UFO realm. So hmm. what I was seeing is they had research evidence, part of the UFO puzzle that we've all been trying to put together but they chose not to share it because of it, might, of it affecting their credibility. Not that it was getting to the truth or it was completing an entire puzzle, but because of personal issues, personal mm. agendas. And you know what that's called? It's called a cover-up. Throughout the UFO community, you hear government cover-up this, government cover-up that. But I'm telling you from experience, and dealing with this type of case, that there's been a cover up all along by the researchers in this UFO community phenomenon that are supposedly giving us the truth and the answers to this experience. It's coming from them because they've got personal agendas. They only want to share certain things. You know, and if you ever follow these conferences that are going on out there, it's like they never give you the whole thing. You know, you get little bits and pieces. And I guess it's part of keeping you busy coming to their conferences. You know, but I've been sharing the same message for years now, the same evidence, and it still disturbs them. There are several testimonies on CE4Research.com and I encourage anyone who has either been affected by the phenomenon or knows someone who has to take a look at this research. It is much too important not to. In an article on HearkenTheWatchman.com entitled Demons or Extraterrestrials Tremble at the Name of Jesus Christ, Dr. Stephen Eulish comes to the same conclusion, stating, quote, I believe in UFOs and extraterrestrials. I do not believe that either I am delusional or am I hallucinating. I do believe that the government is covering up these phenomena even though they are being bewitched as to its real meaning. This deception is part of the spiritual war between God and Satan. These are therefore serious topics." End quote. Programs like Ancient Aliens on the History Channel have attempted to describe these sons of God as being aliens from outer space. This is wishful thinking. The reality is that these fallen angels were rebels to God and not some race of aliens from a faraway galaxy. In fact, the whole idea that there might be an alien race from outer space is part of the New World Order deception. When I was 14 years old, I remember standing in my bedroom and looking out the window and just knowing that something big was going on in this world. And since no one was telling me what it was, I had to get out and find it for myself. And now I know the truth. We see it every day, you and I. It's on the face of almost every car produced in the U.S. and the rest of the world since the 1990s. What is it? It's the shape of the eyes of the demon. of our planet towards peace and harmony, but these demonic beings have been summoned by the Satanists who are now controlling every government on this earth from behind a dark curtain. 
all of this to usher in the Aquarian age of the New World Order, a partnership with the devil, designed by Satan himself to lead mankind directly into hell. One of the biggest problems for the satanic architects of this scheme was the process of getting the people of the world ready for the utterly shocking appearance of these demonic beings. Overt subliminal